Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Welcome to today's seed time and obvious broadcast. I'm always blessed, privileged, honored, and highly favored to have this opportunity to come and speak life to you today, saints of God. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Greetings and welcome to all of you who have gathered with us today here in paradise. And for those of you in our virtual audience, our cell churches, ambassadors, ministerial fellowship, and students in Grace Bible College all around the world, I greet you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Today I want to bring you a message from the book of Psalms. Psalm, and we're going to take a look at verse number verse number five for a foundational text today. So if you'd like to make notes, Psalm 42 verse five will be our foundational text, the latter part of that verse specifically. And so as we take a look at that portion of scripture, we're going to be reminded that we always have hope in God. No matter what our situation, our circumstances, no matter how dark your day may be, no matter how powerful the enemies that are against you, whether that's physical or spiritual or financial or emotional, mental, whatever the struggle is, we can always hope in God. And this portion of scripture is going to speak to us about that. So I'm going to just go ahead and read this foundational text. And then as we get into the exhortation for our message, we'll back up to the preceding verses to put it in context. So verse 5, Psalm 42, verse 5, from the New International Version reads, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Let us pray, saints. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today for everyone who's gathered here with us. And thank you for all of those in the listening audience under the sound and hearing of my voice. I thank you that we have hope eternal in you, no matter what our situations or circumstances. Help each one who may be struggling with difficulties, with challenges in their lives, and just give a spirit of praise instead of a garment of heaviness right now. Give them the oil of gladness, O oh God, instead of a spirit of heaviness. Let us put on this garment of praise today because we have hope in you. And, we, and I speak to every person who's who's troubled in their mind now, in the name of Jesus, that peace will come in as you surrender, as you yield, and just let go right now. Give it to God. If you've been wrestling with losing sleep, give it to Jesus and go to sleep tonight. So, Father, we thank you that your word, as it would minister to us, it will strengthen us and encourage us. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we're going to entitle this message, Put Your Hope in God. Hallelujah. I want you to say that with me. Put your hope in God. To make it more personal, I want you to think about some situations that I'm going to put my hope. I'm going to put my hope. Say it to yourself. I'm going to put my hope in God. I'm not going to put my uh, hope in man. I'm not going to put my hope in myself. I'm not going to put my hope in my friends. I'm going to put my hope, hallelujah, in God. Because he's sovereign. He has the power and ability to not only hear, not only to listen, but he has the power to move on my behalf. This is a song that the portion of a song that the psalmist sang in verse, in chapter 42. If you know anything about the book of Psalms, it is actually a book of songs. These were songs, lyrics to songs that they sang. Some songs were uh, love songs to God. Some songs were cries of pleas and help. Some songs were songs of lamentations or crying or weeping before the Lord. There were some songs of rejoicing. Hallelujah. So we see here this song is a song of hope. And I want it to be sung in your spirit at as you listen, as you think about things that may be against you, as you feel the presence of God in your midst even now, turning your situation around, giving you hope. You may be down to the last day, the last hour, the last minute, but I pray in the name of Jesus, 
and by the power of his Holy Spirit that you put your hope in God. Here the psalmist was giving these lyrics to a song, and we're going to go ahead and back up now to verse number one to kind of put it in context to see what was in the mind of the writer as we spoke verse number five. So if we back up here to verse number one, you're going to see this song of hope. This man may be facing a difficult situation. They're almost pressing him down. If you're familiar with the story of Job, you will see that circumstance after circumstance, situation after situation came against Job and Job could have almost lost hope. And I think the psalmist here is feeling similarly. If we look at these verses, Psalm 42, verse 1, it reads, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Verse 3, My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Verse 5, our foundational text. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Hallelujah, saints. We see that the psalmist had a longing, a thirst, a desire for communion, fellowship, and the presence of God. And I think that when we're going through situations in life, and hopefully it's not the only time that we draw near to God, it's when we're going through difficult situations, but oftentimes difficult situations call us to our knees, call us to beckon unto God, to cry out to God as a plea for his presence, for his power, and his provision in our lives. Here the psalmist is saying, as a deer pants or thirsts for water, as a deer has been trampling and running through a forest and now is tired and is thirsty. He said he pants, thirst for water. Sometimes we go through situations in our life that cause us to be weary sometimes and thirst for help. And I pray that you realize that your help and your hope is in God. For a deer who pants after water, water is the hope that he's looking to be quenched to be fulfilled. He goes on in verse one, it says, so my soul pants for you like a deer thirst for water. I thirst for you, O God. I thirst for your presence. He says in verse two again, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And he asks this question. And I'll, if you're asking this similar question, I want to be able to answer it for you. He says, when can I go and meet with God? The answer for each of us now because of the presence of the Holy Spirit who was given to us through Jesus Christ is that we can go before God's presence even now. Even as you're listening, even as you're reading this scripture, even as, you, as, you, as you're expressing your, your desires unto God, God is present. He's with us, Emmanuel. God with us. Some of you may have felt like the psalmist felt in verse number three. He says, my tears have been my food day and night. There may be things that may have been pressing against you that are so troubling that it seems to be so difficult. It may be physical. It may be financial. It may be relational. It, it may be a job situation or housing, transportation. It could be anything that's going on around your life, or maybe people or bad relationships around you, and you're crying out for, for help. Hope is what you're desiring because it seems so dark right now. And so this, you're not the only one 
who's been there and you're probably not the only one who's going through it right now. Oftentimes we don't really see what's going on inside of people. Sometimes we put a smile on our face and we just press on through the day. But God sees your tears. He hears your cries. And so here the psalmist says, my tears have been my food day and night. While people who may be aware of your situation or circumstance, they may have heard you testify of the goodness and the faithfulness of your God. And it seems like your situation is going from worse to worse and others may be coming around you starting to mock and to scoff you and the faith and this proceeds God that you have. So the psalmist faced that type of situation. He says, people say to me all day long, where is your God? Where, why doesn't your God step in and do something? Do what you need to be done. Saints, God, that can wear us down sometimes. It can almost cause fear and doubt to start to come up in our lives. But I pray today in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, somebody, that you put your hope in God like an anchor. You know, when ships are out the sea and a storm is coming against the the ships, and it can no longer navigate itself because of the power of the wind and the waves. It lets down its anchor. And right now, if you're in a troubling situation, I want you to let down your anchor, which is hope right now. Put your hope in God, knowing that he can speak peace to the winds and the waves. And in the meantime, while things are coming against you, he can hold you in place. He will not allow you to be adrift, to just be a castaway, to be destroyed by this situation or circumstances. Let down your anchor of hope right now, saints, and put your hope in God. Cry out to Jesus, as the psalmist says, and I understand that sometimes when we're going through, weeping may endure for a night, and nighttime may seem like a long time. But I want you to keep your hope in God. Let your anchor down now, even when others are coming against you saying, where is your God? Look at what the psalmist reminded himself of in verse number four. He says, when people are saying to me, where is your God? After tears have been my food for days and nights, even as my soul thirsting for God, even though I'm thirsting for God, he says, I remember these things in verse four, he says. This is what I remember, and I want you to remember, saints of God, as you pour out your soul. I want you to think about how you can go to the presence of God. In this case, he says, how I used to go to the house of God. He found comfort. He found peace. He found protection. He found, he found favor and hope wherever God is. I want you to know the same God that this psalmist is crying out for is in your midst now. He wants to give you comfort. He wants to give you help. He wants to give you peace. He wants to renew your strength. And I want you to turn to him now, saints. That's why, in the name of Jesus, we're going to put our hope in God. I want you to sit there. I'm going to put my hope, even though things seem dark right now, even though the situation may be difficult, even though I have to overcome some fears and some doubts, I'm going to put my hope I'm going to put my hope in God. So the psalmist says, I used to pour out my soul and how I used to go to the house of God, in our case, in the presence of God, under the protection of the mighty one, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng of others. See, sometimes when we're going through, we don't feel like praising God. It's not because we're praising because of the situation. It's not because we're joyful because of what we're going through. But we praise God and we give shouts of joy for we he know that he is our help and he's our hope. So the psalmist reminded himself that in spite of what I be going through, I could always turn to God. And I can remember that under his protection, in his presence, is fullness of joy. So he says in verse five, as I remember these things, I say to myself, why my soul are you downcast? Realizing that you have protection from God, realizing that you can go before his presence, realizing that you can come before his presence with shouts of joy and praise. Why? He says to himself and perhaps 
Some of you right now will be able to say to yourself, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, he says, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. It is my prayer that by the power of the Holy Spirit now that those of you who may be wrestling, may have been struggling, may have been troubled and disturbed in your mind, have not been able to sleep, that you will be able to remind yourself of the presence of God, that you can enter into his presence even now. For God is with us. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. And I want you to think about the protection that he's going to provide for you. It reminds me of Psalm chapter 91 where it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. That's where you find your protection. That's where you can think, give God shouts of joy and praise because you know that God has not abandoned you. He has not forgotten you and that God is going to make all things work for your good. Somebody give God a shout of joy and praise even now as you realize and remind yourself that in spite of whatever I may be going through or whatever I may go through, I'm going to remind myself that I can go before God's presence. I can find protection from him and I can give shouts of joy and praise because I put my hope in him. Father, I thank you. I thank you that right now that your Holy Spirit is strengthening troubled minds and hearts now. That you're taking away the fear and the anxiety that they have. And you helping them to remember that they can put their hope and their trust in you. That you also have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, a love, and a sound mind. And I thank you today that you're bringing peace into the minds of those who are troubled. I thank you that you're placing faith where there was once fear. You're giving courage where there was doubts. And I thank you, Lord God. That, that you're strengthening us from the inner parts of ourselves right now. For they who wait on the Lord, you shall renew their strength. As we put our anchor of hope down in you, Jesus, we trust, we believe, and we receive the help, the peace, the protection that you have made available to us by placing our hope in you. In Jesus' name, amen. You've been listening to Seed Time and Harvest with Bishop Lyndon Hutcherson of Amazing Grace Ministries. We were blessed that you tuned in to today's message and look forward to connecting with you in person or on future podcasts. Feel free to reach out to us for more information about our ministries by visiting our website, Amazing Grace Ministries, at www.agministries.net.